this is the first case. It's a deep, a large deep uh, soft tissue mass in an adult. And you can see there's a lot of variation from low power here. Uh, by the way, I'll put all these virtual slides, I'll, I'll record this and I'll put it on YouTube and Kiko with links to the virtual slides uh, at some point in the near future, hopefully. So here we can see a cellular nodule uh, in this area and it's got kind of monotonous uh, spindle cells uh, with some collagen and a little bit of pale uh, substance in the background uh, arranged in fascicles. Not a totally specific uh, pattern right here, but I'll tell you what the monotony uh, the lack of pleomorphism always makes me think about a translocation tumor, as you all probably know if you follow my uh, online posts and videos. I think the key to the diagnosis here, though, is this area over uh, to the right, where we can see dense sclerotic collagen, and there are all these cracks and spaces. At first, you might wonder if those are vascular spaces. They are not. They're artifactual clefting and cracking around the tumor cells. And what's happening is that the tumor cells, which have a more round, uh, kind of almost a round blue cell appearance here. Let's get that in focus. There, that's a little better. The cells here are not as spindled. They're more round and blue or even epithelioid. And they're arranged in these cords and chains that dissect through a background of very dense sclerotic collagen. And that is the, the pattern that is really important for making the diagnosis here is cords and chains of round or epithelioid cells in a dense sclerotic collagen background. And so when you recognize that pattern, you can do an immunostain to help prove the diagnosis. And uh, if any of you are thinking of it, you can say it to your neighbor right now and uh, get a bonus point from me. Uh, the answer is MUC4, M-U-C-4. MUC4 is the stain that is positive in low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma, and it's also positive in this entity here, which is called sclerosing epithelioid fibrosarcoma. And so sclerosing epithelioid fibrosarcoma is an interesting and, and quite rare tumor. It's interesting because it has some degree of overlap or relationship to low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma also known as Evans tumor. And you can see that in some cases where you have areas that are bland spindle cells resembling low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma that then are kind of hybrid and merged together with the more classic sclerosing epithelioid fibrosarcoma pattern. So this case had some spindled areas that did kind of vaguely resemble low-grade fibromyxoid. We saw that cellular nodule earlier. Then you get bland uh, spindle cell areas with very fine, delicate collagen and a little bit of pale kind of edema to myxoid background here. This looks to me quite a bit like low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma. So I think you could make the argument that this tumor maybe represents one of those hybrid tumors. So uh, low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma is uh, has a, a tendency to metastasize often many years after diagnosis. Sclerosic epithelioid fibrosarcoma, on the other hand, sometimes is more, more aggressive and more rapidly aggressive um, than the low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma. So there's still some debate over what relationship there is between these two entities, but we do think, or at least I think and believe, and I know other, some others do as well, that there is some sort of connection between them. So it's a good thing to recognize because the reason that you want to know about this tumor is this pattern right here is quite interesting and I, I would say kind of unusual for soft tissue tumors. And if you had it on a small needle biopsy, you could even be uh, tempted to think about maybe a carcinoma, like say lobular breast carcinoma, infiltrating uh, background collagen or something like that. Obviously, it, when we have the whole context that this is a large, deep mass, it doesn't make any sense really to be metastatic carcinoma. Uh, but if you had a small needle and didn't have radiographic information, uh, that could make it much more challenging. So uh, just rec recognize this pattern. And, you know, I think the other thing to know is that when they have the areas of infiltrative cord-like growth with sclerotic collagen, that's great. But sometimes you get kind of solid round cell areas or solid kind of almost sheet-like epithelioid cells where there's not as much background collagen. And I had a case like this not long ago, actually, where, um, where the round cells didn't really make the classic cords or they kind of vaguely made cords like you see right here, but without very much collagen in between. And so I, I struggled with that case. And then I saw that it was mingled with some bland spindle cell areas that vaguely reminded me of low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma. And then I did MUC4 and it was positive and that solved 
the the uh, the case for me. So these uh, these tumors sclerosis epithelioid fibrosarcoma, they tend to have a gene rearrangement of the Ewing's gene, EWSR1, usually fused with CREB 3L1. Okay, so uh, CREB, the CREB genes are also involved in low-grade fiber myxoid sarcoma, but the majority of low-grade fiber myxoid sarcomas have FUS, FUS gene, fused with CREB 3L2. So there is, again, there's some similarity, but also some difference there. So a subset of these uh, sclerosing epithelioid fibrosarcomas can have that same fusion, the uh, FUS CREB 3L2, that you see in low-grade fiber myxoid sarcoma, but most of them actually have EWSR1 rearrangements with CREB 3L1. So you can do some more reading about that, but I just want you to recognize this pattern because it's kind of a unique and um, could be confusing if you had never seen it before. And also there's a lot of variability uh, in the, the pattern and cellularity, which is something that I find true of low-grade fiber myxoid sarcoma as well, that you have variable cellularity and variable background of myxoid to sclerotic throughout the tumor. So there's heterogeneity. Here's another example from a different patient. This is also sclerosing epithelioid fibrosarcoma. Again, that heterogeneity, cellular and then less cellular, uh, sclerotic collagen background, and then other areas with a bit of myxoid background. And that can be kind of a useful clue to the diagnosis. And here we can see more round blue cell uh, appearance. The last uh, example was more epithelioid. Here it's more of an almost small round blue cell appearance, but again with that, that unique cord-like pattern in a sclerotic collagen background. And uh, just like the previous case, you could confuse this with a variety of other tumors that make cords and chains of tumor cells. Um, so it's good to remember this one and keep it in mind. Sclerosing epithelioid fibrosarcoma. Quite rare. I've only seen a handful of these in uh, over a decade of practicing soft tissue pathology.